well you can see this, but there are fish busting everywhere here. There we go. Well, there for one anyway. Well, they're all just about the same size. Come on. ever trying to get a hold of a fish that's really thrashing. See how I got a hold of him? And you just kind of squeeze on his gills so they kind of close on him a little bit. And they'll stop flopping around. Oh, there's one. Now this one's on a rattle trap. show you that again. Grab him here, squeeze, and he'll come right down. Well, this one's just a hair bigger, but not much. All right, see you later, buddy. I'm not really sure how well you can see this, but it's 87.6 degrees, the water temperature. And it's 11.14 in the morning. So I'm sure by later today, it'll be over 90. Below this video, click on Show More to see links for many of the items used in many of my videos. They are there so you can locate them in case you are interested. Hi, my name's Jerry, and I'm a lifelong fisherman. As a matter of fact, I used to guide at a place where we had tagged fish. It was our job when we caught a fish with guests that we took down the tag number, got a size, approximate uh, length and weight of, of the fish and where we caught it. And we would report that at the end of the day and they kept track of that and we could track where particular fish were caught over time and if they grew in weight or lost weight over time. But we could have never done that without a tag in it to know it was the right fish. Well, here's one of those slippery rascals right now. Well, how would you know that you caught this fish before? Well, he's kind of fake, but that's all right. My neighbor, Joe, same guy that brings me ice cream when we're out fishing in the boat. He got me this and Joe, I appreciate it. I'm gonna use this as a prop for the video here. But how would you know that you had caught this fish before? You'd have to have tagged the fish with something to let you know that this fish had been caught before. So come see how I've tagged the fish. I'm doing it a little bit different than probably fish and wildlife people do. My goal is different than theirs. Just come and see. Well, I've been doing just that. I've been tagging some of my fish that I've caught for the last six, seven or so months. 
I want to know if I've caught fish in my lakes in the community before. We've got eight, nine lakes here, and I stocked them all when I originally moved here 16, 17 years ago and started putting bait in and a few bass in each lake. After a few years, they just took off. I put in threadfin shad, uh, bluegill, sunfish, and golden shiners. Those took off and fed the bass that were here. Well, the bass that were here, and the largest I put in was in the lake that's behind my house, was a six and a quarter or a six and a half, I don't remember. After that, we started to catch fish well over that size. So I know that the fish that were here started to grow and reproduce on their own. And it's because of the seed that we put here to start with. So I still want to know if the fish that are here that I catch are fish that I have caught before. If you do some research on the internet, it isn't easy to find where to get tags. And to get them, they're pretty expensive. Generally, commercial locations, you have to buy a thousand or a couple of thousand at a time. And then there are a handful of places trying to sell tags, specialty tags, to people like you and me who might want to do something like this. But if you go to a commercial site and you need to buy a tagging gun. Well, a tagging gun, the common one that all the commercial sites sell is this one. It's called an Avery Denison Mark III and it's a pistol grip tagging gun. Well, I had one of these and I'll explain something in a minute, but I had it for a little while, not very long. Why? Is when I travel on foot, I have a little fishing bag that's over my shoulder and somehow this fell out of it. I went back looking for it and it was gone. So I had to go buy another one. But this one I liked, but it was no different than all the rest of them. And they came with needles like this. Now, I thought that it was a big deal to have a whole bunch of needles because it almost seemed like they would break them. Never done this before, so I didn't know how much you would think. I'm still on the same needle that I originally started with, with a different gun. I didn't have to go buy extra needles. I guess it's handy that I have some, but that isn't what I had to do. One commercial place that I went and looked to buy this gun sells it for $106.32 plus shipping and tax. I think that's a lot. You can go on Amazon and buy this gun shipped to your house for about $15. It doesn't come with the tags. I think I bought my original one like this for about $20 and it came with like 5,000 tags. That's a heck of a lot cheaper than buying it in a place that sells them commercially. Now, what's a tag? What's a tag? The tags that go in these guns are called a T-bar tag. Now the commercial ones have a thread coming out of them after you put it into the fish and it has numbers on it so that you can distinguish between this fish and another fish. That isn't what I need to do. All I care about is did I catch this fish before? That's all I care about. Is this a fish I caught in the past? So I can learn generally how many fish are in one of these lakes that I'm fishing. Is there just a handful of fish and that we keep catching all the time? Or are there many fish in here and I'm rarely catching uh, the same fish over and over again? That's a question I've wondered about for many, many years. So what is the tags that I use? These are called T-bar tags. See that if it focuses. They have a kind of a strip on one end and it's got things that protrude on each side, almost like a T. What are these things designed to do? These are clothing tags. These are the ones that you go to the store, especially a clothing store, and there's a little paper tag sticking out of the shirt in the corner. And through the shirt is a little plastic piece that hangs onto the shirt and then goes through the tag and hangs onto the tag. These are the exact same thing. They're the exact same thing that the commercial tags are. However, on one end of it where it comes out of the fish, it then gets a little bit wider and has almost like a little cylinder on it that has printing on it. It might have the name of the company that printed them. It might be the name of the Fish and Wildlife Agency. It might be instructions to the person who catches the fish that says call this phone number and but they all have a number on it so that you know this fish is different than that fish. I don't care about that. 
All I care about is, did I catch this fish before? I don't like the idea of this much stuff at the end sticking out on the fish as he's swimming around. I don't care about this. I want to remove it. Now this is the gun that I replaced the one I lost with. You can buy these as cheap as around $7 and they come with a bunch of the tags. I don't know that there's much difference. They all work the same way. They all function the same way. And I guess it just depends on the durability of it. The other one that I had seems like it was a little bit more durable than this one is, but I've been using this one for more than six months. No issue at all. What is the gun like? Pull that off, there's usually a safety. There's a needle here and it's sharp. So there's a reason for having this safety on the end. So when you're gonna put it into the fish and tag the fish, I pull that off. I usually pull it off and keep it in my mouth, but I can't talk if I'm doing that. And then I leave a strip of these. You can see all the ones that I've taken off and I've gone through many of these strips. I tagged a number of these fish around here in my community on private property. Um, and you can see that's what's gonna stick out of the fish that focuses. It's just a little thing. And how do I get that like that? Let me show you how these work, just to give you an idea. So I'm gonna pull this strip out. And you can pull it out any time, but I just wanted to show it while I've got them here because I've only got a couple left. Pull that off, stick it in the fish. You pull the gun, <laughs> the trigger, and it flies out like that one just did. I didn't mean to do that so fast. Let me hang on to them so that they don't fly. So one, and it, and it pushes it up the tube and then comes out. Well, this is inside the fish, so when it comes out, that little T-shaped, let me put that there, that little T-shaped thing is now inside the fish. So when you put it in, you squeeze it while it's still in, you turn it sideways, and then pull it out, and it leaves the tag behind. And then you kind of pull on the tag a little bit just to make sure it got secured into the fish, okay? Does that make sense how it works, I hope? Now, if I keep pulling the trigger, these will just keep coming out and I'll have just a strip at the end. If you needed to, for whatever reason, take the strip out, there's usually a release button here and it, and it pushes back up and you can take them out. So there could be a whole bunch of tags still on here that I took out for whatever reason. Now these tags come in different lengths. These are about, I don't know, two inches, three inches. When I bought the guns, they came with a sampling of, uh, well, I shouldn't say sampling, like 5,000 of these. And they're either two and a half inches or they're three inches or four inches. And that's about generally what they are. If you wanted to take it out because you wanted to put in a shorter tag because maybe you were tagging bluegills instead of large bass, then you could just pull it out and do a different one. Hopefully you can see this and it focuses. At the top of the gun right here, there's a little slot. And in the slot, you're going to slide this in. See how it has uh, something protruding in the bottom and then the T is there, okay? Where this side is just, just a T and there's nothing else with it. So I'm gonna stick this in, stick it in the gun, Go all down like that. And I wanna make sure it works so that I'm not doing this after I'm trying to hold the fish. And that one came loose. I don't know if you can see it. See how it came loose? Watch, I'm gonna do another one. Now a second one came out. What it did was it pushed it out, but since these are still attached, it didn't go anywhere. So it's just kind of hanging out here. What I don't want is the fish to be swimming around with this T and sticking out of it catching on the grass or anything. I, I suppose they could swim just fine with that sticking out, but I don't want it on there. So what do I do? Well, I need to put on glasses because I'm gonna use some scissors and I don't want to cut myself. What I do is I pull the strip back out and then these are all the ends that I don't want to be there anymore. I take a pair of scissors and I go up tight to them and I start to cut them off. Remember, they're all attached to each other. So that's what I get when I get done. And this goes back into the gun. Remember the two that I fired off already? See how it sticks out? It doesn't make any difference. I could turn it around, put it in the other way, but I'm just trying to show you. You don't have to worry about that. So I put it all the way until it seats. Pull this off just so you can see it. And off came the tag. And if I do it again, they'll keep coming off. 
how do we get it into the fish? What's the right place to put it into the fish? A lot of the videos that you see of me fishing behind the house, if you look close enough as I'm putting the fish back into the water, I often hold the fish not so that you can see this side, show the camera this side and throw them back in the water. Because I didn't want to have people asking me, what's that thing sticking out of the side of the fish until I was ready to do this video. I am going to use this fish as an example about how I do this. So I've caught a fish and he's flopping all around just like you saw this guy doing. A bass has two fins on it. One is kind of in front of here, one's behind it. Kind of this should be the front fin, if you will, okay? So in a bass, there would be a second fin back here, but on a bluegill, it's gonna be all the way across and you're gonna do the same idea. You got a flopping fish, got the gun in your hand. I happen to break this off by accident. This goes onto this, uh, there was a little spot with it attached and I broke it off so that when you take this off, I wouldn't lose it. But because of that, this is what I do. I pull it off, I hold it in my mouth. I'm gonna take that off just so I can talk to you. And then I take the fish and I usually lay them on the ground. You often see me catching a fish in the lakes here and me pulling it up onto the lawn and it lays onto the lawn and then you see me bend over, pick it up. That's because the part I didn't show you was how I was tagging the fish. I take it, lay it on the lawn and right at the base of the fins, I take the needle, I prick up so that uh, I'm not penetrating through the middle of a scale. So I prick it up so I get between scales and then I don't want to go through this material, but then I push it in so it's at the base of these, the fin, squeeze the trigger. Matter of fact, let me squeeze the trigger. It's all the way in, the needle's all the way in. I turn it a little bit, I pull it back out and it leaves the tag sticking out almost kind of looking like this. He just got it sticking out of his body. Well, then you pull on it just to make sure that that T really did get secured on something so that it won't be falling out. And then you take the fish and you let it go. I've been doing this for well over six months, if not seven, eight months anyway. How do I know that I've caught the same fish? Well, it's got that tag on the side. And ones that I have caught that are older fish, that tag that was that color is no longer that color. He's as green as a bass, dark, dark, dark green. So the tag has taken on the same colors from being in the water. It's almost got kind of moss growing on it a little bit, which is fine because it blends in perfectly with his back. So if you're not looking for this, you're gonna catch that fish, gonna take off the hook, probably throw it back, not even know that that was on there. So I'm the one that looks for it every time I take one and, and catch it. I always put it on this side of the fish. Uh, and there's a reason. If I put it on this side of the fish and I catch a fish that's got the tag in it, I know this is a fish that I tagged before because there's nobody else in my community that's doing this. If I sometimes bring fish from other locations, I catch them in ponds, I catch them in, and then I'll throw them in our lakes. Well, when I do that, I want to know the difference between this fish that I've caught over and over again in my own lake as opposed to I've now caught one with a tag, but it's from a different lake. So I take this and I put it on this side of the fish. So if there's a tag on this one, I know I brought that, that fish in. Since I started doing this, I brought that fish in and let him go from another lake. And so that's where I tag him. So one place or the other. And it tells me a lot of information. It tells me I've caught them before and it tells me based on the color of the strip, whether I recently tagged them or if I tagged them many months ago. And let me tell you a conclusion. Since I started doing this, I didn't know how many fish were in the lakes, in particular, the lake behind my house. I said, I probably fished that one more than the others. I learned over time that I rarely catch one of the fish that I've tagged. Not that I don't catch them, but I don't catch them often, which tells me there's a lot more fish in this lake than I never even knew were here because I've tagged a bunch of them at this point. I have learned what I want to learn from it. And I just thought maybe you'd be interested to see what I've done. Now, right about now, I'd be wondering if I were you, why doesn't he do something so that he can make the tags have some kind of way to indicate a different fish, just like the number system, whether it be colors or it's something else. Well, I thought about that. So I ordered on eBay this really skinny little shrink wrap. 
and I think it's three millimeter. I cut it in pieces. I slid it on the uh, T-bar things and I took and heated them to shrink them down. And then I nipped the ends of this T because again, I don't want too much sticking out the back. I nipped them enough that this thing still stays on here, but this doesn't. So as you can see, the little skinny plastic things didn't do too well when I heated it, but it worked a little bit. And then I took a small little craft pen. They call it an oil-based paint pen. And this one has a tiny little needle where the paint comes out. I don't know if you can even see this. I tried putting numbers on there but they're very difficult to do and you can only get a like space of three numbers and I can't even read my own handwriting. And I caught a fish with one of these on here that had been in the water for probably a month. Guess what happened? This was still on here, the piece of shrink wrap. However, I, the numbers were gone. So it was a lot of effort to do this and I got nothing out of it. So I don't do that anymore. If you came up with another idea of how to make these a little bit different, I'd be willing to listen anyway. I hope you found it interesting what I was doing. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them below. I'll try to answer them or subscribe if you haven't. Give me a thumbs up, push the bell. You know the drill. Thanks for watching. Bye now.